In our second lesson on Chapter 5, Protein Function, we want to look specifically at the binding affinity of myoglobin. First of all, we want to define a constant to indicate the equilibrium binding of oxygen. So let's do a simple case. We have unbound myoglobin on the left. It's going to bind oxygen. Here's the bound form on the right, and so there's an equilibrium between the unbound and bound forms. So now we can come up with an expression for an equilibrium constant. This would be an association constant. Remember, it's always products over reactants. So this is the ratio of bound to unbound. Instead of an association constant, we could express a dissociation constant, in which case we're looking at the equilibrium from the opposite point of view. That is, we're starting with myoglobin bound and moving towards the unbound form. So now we can develop an, a dissociation constant, another equilibrium constant, again, products over reactants. In this case, it's the relationship of the unbound to the bound. In either case, whether it's an association constant or dissociation constant, is still a measure of the affinity of myoglobin for oxygen. From the association point of view, it's how readily does it bind. In the dissociation, how readily does it let go of oxygen. For most biochemists, we consider binding constants in terms of a dissociation constant, and so it's the latter case we'll be looking at here. And so the question is, once myoglobin binds oxygen, how tightly does it hold on? How likely is it to dissociate? That is our equilibrium expression on the bottom of the screen here. Now you'll notice, as the affinity of myoglobin for oxygen increases, the concentration of the bound form will increase. That's in our denominator, which means that the numerical value of our equilibrium constant will decrease. So as binding affinity increases, our K value decreases. Now that we have an expression for that equilibrium constant, we want to be able to measure how much oxygen is actually bound. And so let's come up with an expression for that. That'll be our fractional saturation, or Y. So it's simply an expression of the fraction of the bound to the total amount of myoglobin that's present. So in our expression here, we have the total amount of myoglobin. It would either be in the unbound or bound form. So again, the denominator is the total amount of myoglobin. Out of the total myoglobin that's present, how much is actually bound to oxygen? Now we want to combine these two expressions so that we can see the relationship between the equilibrium constant and the fractional saturation. In other words, how does the affinity of myoglobin for oxygen, that's our equilibrium constant, relate to the degree to which it is saturated with oxygen, our fractional saturation, Y? When we combine these two expressions, let's first rearrange that expression for K. And so now we have an expression for the concentration of the bound form, and we're going to substitute that in our expression for Y. We do that in the bottom of the screen left here. We've substituted that expression in for our expression for y. We can simplify that algebraically. And then we notice, secondly, that we have the concentration of myoglobin in all three of our terms. And so we can cancel that out. And now we've simplified our expression. So the fractional saturation is a function of oxygen concentration and that equilibrium constant. Well, how would we measure the concentration of a gas? That would be the partial pressure. So in this case, it's the partial pressure of oxygen, the PO2. So here's the final form of our expression on the right here. So simply stated, the fractional saturation, that is the degree to which myoglobin is bound to oxygen, is a function both of its innate affinity, that's our constant K, and how much oxygen is actually present, the concentration of oxygen, our partial pressure. Think of it this way. Imagine I have a very good friend, and so I have a high affinity for this person. That's our K value. But it's not just a matter of how much time I want to spend with the, this person, but also how much time do I have available. That's our oxygen concentration. And so the degree to which myoglobin binds oxygen depends on its innate affinity, but also on how much oxygen is available.
And so now when we study this fractional saturation, that's our value y, and remember that's a fraction, so we go from 0 to 1, we're going to look at that as a function of oxygen concentration, our PO2 value, units are torr, and that increases from left to right. When we study this in the case of myoglobin, we see described a hyperbolic plot. Notice that at low oxygen concentration, that binding increases rapidly. So we have a linear portion of the curve, a very steep slope, until it reaches some saturating value, some asymptote up here. That represents the value at which the myoglobin is mostly saturated. So that's our Y max, or full saturation value. Our equilibrium constant is at that halfway point, our one-half Y max. That's where it's half saturated. So that's our equilibrium constant. We call that the P50 because it's the partial pressure of oxygen where myoglobin is half or 50% saturated. Notice how low that value is. It's 2.8 torr. So remember, the lower the value, the higher the affinity. So this means myoglobin has a very high affinity for oxygen even at low concentrations. And so now how does that relate to its role within the cell? Well, myoglobin's job is to pick up oxygen in the tissues and deliver it to the mitochondria. It's needed for reactions associated with muscle activity, specifically aerobic respiration. So you can see it is well suited to its function. In our next lesson, we want to compare the structures of myoglobin and hemoglobin. How do they compare in terms of their structures and their binding affinities? And if we see a difference, how does that relate to their biological function?